Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Saturday. It's Saturday, guys. Can you believe that? Saturday, May 27th. <clears throat> Tomorrow, May 28th, Tomahawk Car Memorial Day Car Show. And uh, uh, Monday, Monday's Memorial Day. Um, I imagine many people are traveling today. I don't know how many of you are uh, making plans to leave this day. I have the, I have to go at, uh, oh, probably about 10 o'clock this morning up to the um, uh, Union Grove Cemetery as we uh, prepare for the, for the, um, the, I'm playing with the sound level, by the way, right now, um, as we prepare for the, uh, uh, Veterans Day, uh, or Veterans Memorial Ceremony. It's not Veterans Day, it's Memorial Day, but um, on Saturday. It's kind of funny because Union Grove Cemetery is on one side of, of uh, Lakeland Road, and on the other side of Lakeland Road is one of the newer um, national cemeteries, uh, our, our national memorial cemeteries for our, our um, um, soldiers. Um, servicemen and uh, uh, but I don't know I, I think he said like 20 years ago a gentleman up there in Harsha by the name of Rick Smith started this ceremony on Saturday so that it wouldn't interfere with Memorial Day events but it would still be a remembrance of the soldiers there and it, it is just like, it's like nothing I've ever been at uh, Memorial Day <laughs> Most most towns and villages and cities have a Memorial Day service of some kind at their cemeteries, and the, you know, um, sometimes the Boy Scouts or soldiers or VFW or so on uh, march from some point in town in a parade to the cemetery, and then at the cemetery, the there some words are said, and there's a 21 gun salute, and that's kind of the end of it. This thing is 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 phenomenal with music and um, uh, military rites and and uh, honors. Um, I'm asked each year since I've been here. This will be the third year to give a. They call it an invocation. It's more than an invocation, but kind of an opening address, fairly short, but uh, beginning in prayer, um, and then the events kind of take place, and then um, at the end. They asked me to give what they call a benediction, um, which is actually just a short homily um, followed by, I like anyway, to follow it with prayer at the end. Um, it's just, I, I don't know, when I first went, I thought, what is this going to be the first year? And um, uh, it is, it is, it uh, it does, it, it, it honors the, the, deceased servicemen and in the cemetery there's there are uh, men servicemen dating back to the, to the um, Revolutionary War which is kind of weird out in the middle of here but uh, Civil War every 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 uh, war that we've been involved with there are servicemen in the cemetery from maybe only one Revolutionary War is only one I how somebody got out here from the Revolutionary War I don't know I mean this would be like the wilderness at that time Anyway, it's a great event, and I'll be there this morning. It's going to be a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day now. It's a beautiful day out. The sun is bright. In fact, the, the uh, gentleman who who does this thing contacted me last night and said, can you keep the benediction a little shorter? Um, and I said, well, it's already shorter than last year. And he said, well, shorter than that, because it's going to be hot by the time you're speaking, and some of the population out there is not... Um, well, they're older, and heat's not good. Anyway, good morning. Glad you're here with us on this Saturday morning as we begin the Memorial Day weekend. Traffic on 51, absolutely insane. We went to the Tomahawk High School graduation last night, both to see Zan sing in the choir. The choir sings a couple of numbers, the Star Spangled, or not the Star Spangled Banner. But, um, yeah, the Star Spangled Banner. No. Well, anyway, um, and in another two, another song for the 
for the graduating seniors. And um, we went to leave, and the traffic from coming north on 51 was nonstop. I mean, it was almost bumper to bumper, um, and trying to get out on the highway was next to impossible. And then coming back a couple hours later after the ceremony was done, um, south was and like three cars and going south in the visible range that we had. But going north was still bumper to bumper solid. Um, I imagine this morning will be the same way as I got to head north to to Harshaw. Well, let's see who's here with us on this on this Saturday morning. So Connie and Robin, good morning there in Harshaw. Actually, I should do a refresh here because this doesn't always keep up with everything that's going on. Uh, flip back to the top. So Connie and Robin, good morning. Uh, maybe we'll see you guys over there at uh, Union Grove. Maybe not. But Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Al, good morning. And good morning. Yeah, getting ready to head head down to uh, to Lisa's, if I remember right. I can't go. I got stuff to do. Bob and Jeannie, good morning to you guys. Uh, Renee, good morning. Uh, pretty day here. Sunny, a high of 73 in the forecast. All right. Could, yeah, we could use some rain, too. I don't think we're going to get it. We're into a weather pattern that uh, is going to make us drier than normal. At least that's my understanding. Verna, good morning. I wonder I'm no longer... Well, okay, so notifications. Today was my fault. Um, in fact, I had a hard time finding the event, but I didn't schedule it ahead. And I, I came down here this morning a little bit before 7 and set up the, the notification. And I don't know why, but Facebook, they give me a warning now that says, for best results, um, schedule your events at least 11 days in advance. Um, so I have a feeling that they've reduced the number of outgoing notifications, or maybe there's so many people doing live events on Facebook that the notifications don't go out. So I apologize, Verna. Um, I, like I said, I had a hard time finding the even the, the um, event so I could start it today. Um, that's why last week I had scheduled, um, or maybe it was a week before, but I'd scheduled a whole week of them at the beginning of the week. And that's what I'll be doing later today. I'll be scheduling um, what we're doing from now until... Um, well, I, I don't know exactly. I gotta go through my calendar and, and see, but uh, scheduling all of them that I can so that you'll have the notifications. So that's that's on that's a little bit on me and a little bit on Facebook, and I I apologize for that. Um, I guess what I could do is I could not only schedule the event, but also schedule a post that comes up at like eight fifteen to say that we're starting at eight twenty five. Um, but the, the, the Facebook used to do that for us, and Bonnie has had the same frustration when I when I schedule them the same morning. They don't seem to to show up as well. So um, we'll we'll work we'll work on that. We'll work on that. Jerry, good morning to you. Uh, light breeze, motorcycles on the road. Well, of course, yeah, yeah. Coming up, coming up, uh, fifty three there, and and uh, uh, probably across the. Across the thumb as well. I remember in our house there that was on Marlette Street, it was when the weather got nice, so row, 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 all day long. And then there's, there's well, that the Hogtown runs not till later in the year. All right, well, that appears to be everybody who's here. Those in the background, good morning. Glad you're watching as well. Those watching later today, hi. Glad you're here with us. Those over on YouTube, thank you for tuning in after 11 a.m. Like, share. Um, that helps the algorithm find us. Uh, join our little group here on Facebook. So you should get the notifications. Yeah, sorry. Um, subscribe over on YouTube. Hit the bell so you get the notifications there. Even leave a comment uh, on Facebook or on YouTube because that, that helps the algorithm um, throw this stuff out to more people. So, all right. Let's, uh, let's get down. To business. It is uh, Saturday, May 27th. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. I have my Treasury of Daily Prayer here today, which I am not going to lift up. I haven't rebandaged my hand yet, and uh, frankly, the stitches are a little dried out and a little painful today. So, all right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, psalm uh, somewhere here, ah, Psalm 116, verses 1 through 4 and 16 through 19. A little, little division here to get some extra verses on this Saturday morning. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me, and the pangs of Sheol hold, laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maid servant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in, the, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he's inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. And the, the, and, and the, the hearing is not a result of the loving, and the calling is not a result of the hearing. Does that make sense? I think my camera shifted a little. Anyway. Um, the, the Lord loves his creation so much that he gave his life for it. Um, and, and out of that love, he hears our prayers. Um, and we love him because he hears our prayers, but it's not because he loves his prayers. It's because he gave his life for us and saved us, right? He redeemed us. Even, even as the snares of death seem to encompass and the pangs of Sheol lay hold upon us, and we suffer in anguish and distress, the Lord delivers our soul. We call upon him and he delivers us in his mercy and in his grace. That's good stuff right there. Let's, um, let's go on to our reading for today. Luke chapter 20, picking up where we left off yesterday. Um, chapter 20, verse 45, and then uh, going on to 21, verse 19. Oh, and there's a there's a lot of little a lot of little snippets in here of teaching. Um, so let's see what we got here. Luke 20 verse 45. We're picking up again where we left off yesterday. Jesus had just said, um, "Who is the? Uh, how is it that um, they say that the Christ is David's son when David himself says, "Lord of my Lord, you know, sit at my feet until I make your enemies your footstool." We pick up at verse 45 here. And in the hearing of all the people, he said to his disciples, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love greetings in the marketplaces and the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins, and he said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings. He said, As for these things that you see, 
The days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this... They will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds, not to meditate beforehand on how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated for all, or hated by all, for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hmm. Like I said, there's a lot of a lot of teachings here in this in this text um uh there's uh oh there bonnie popped in yeah yeah we're six, uh, 64 and sunny smell of smoke outside oh i wonder if somebody's having a campfire um uh um, what is this yeah no okay so He's asked the question of the scribes. Oh, hey, Michael. And Karen as well. Ah, I don't know if you're late or I'm early or whatever. Doesn't matter. You're here. <clears throat> so beware of the scribes. He, he's, he, we just had yesterday Jesus speaking to um, chief priests and scribes. Um, and they couldn't say anything else about him. And we had him uh, speaking to the Sadducees, and they could ask him no more questions. And he warned warned the people about them um, and about what they do. Um, and the questioning about taxes. And now Jesus tells, in the hearing of all the people, he said to his disciples, right? So there's there's a little bit of an aside here, right? Everyone can hear him, but he's saying it to them. So it's it's not necessarily for everyone to hear, but he's saying it where everyone can hear. Beware of the scribes. The scribes are the the scribes are the are primarily people who um, well what's a scribe do? He records what people say, right? You go to a scribe and you dictate a letter. Most of most of the scriptures are written not by the men whose names attached with them, but the actual physical writing takes place um by a scribe, you the, the person you, you just in the first century you did you didn't just grab pen and paper well um, uh, and write uh, you went to a scribe who had pen and paper and then you spoke dictated and they recorded what was said um, which is one of the reasons that that I say continually that the scriptures are more about the hearing than the reading. If you're, if you're reading your Bible, it's, it's better to read it aloud because it's the hearing. It was the spoken word taken down on paper 
You didn't have recording medium like tape recorders or anything like that. But the spoken word was recorded in, in, in written word. Beware of the scribes. And the scribes, because they are the recorders of all things, they, they've got a little bit of status. Right? They're learned men who write. They're not secretaries. Scribes. They also have leadership positions in the, in the temple and in the synagogues. They like to walk around in long robes, like ex expensive robes, notable robes. And they like the greetings in the marketplaces and the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts. And we already have heard Jesus say, don't go to the, to the honor seat, go to the lower seat. And then when the host calls you to the higher seat, you are honored instead of being dishonored by being asked to move down. They devour widows' houses. When the husband dies, they go after the, the, the finances of the, of the husband that passed. And for a pretense, they make long prayers. Don't confuse this with the prayer of the church, which is long. But for a reason, the, the, these, are, these are long prayers that are um, all about self-aggrandizement uh, or, or um, pageantry. They will receive the greater condemnation. They receive their blessing in this life. As scribes, the higher seats, the long robes, the greetings in the marketplace, the invitations to feasts and the seats of honor at them. Um, they've received their good stuff in this life. In the next life, they will, well, anyway. So they're warned of the scribes. Don't be like them. Then he looks up and he sees um, the wealthy, the rich, putting their gifts into the offering box. Right. So on the on the side of the temple, or perhaps in the temple court, um, there's a box on the wall. Right. And you come and you put your financial offerings into that box, which is intended for the upkeep of the temple, but also for the caretaking of the those in, in need. And so the rich are putting their gifts into the offering box, but this poor widow comes, right? She has um, she has no husband. She's a widow, speaking of devouring widows' homes. And all she has in her hand, all she possesses is two small copper po coins. Um, we, we often say when we're teaching this, two pennies, um, because pennies are copper coins for us. Um, they may not have even been as valuable as pennies, but it's all she has. And he says, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they gave out of their abundance, and she, out of her poverty, put in all she has. Right? She held nothing back. She has placed her hands, or placed herself in the hands of God. She has nothing else, right? In, 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 in today's congregations, in, in, the, in the New Testament scriptures, um, the amount of an offering is not commanded by God. We know that. You know that, I know, right? Paul says the Lord loves a cheerful giver, right? So we, there is an expectation of sharing what we have with the church. Um, and, and, and I like to teach that it should be in proportion uh, to, to what we give. That we give in proportion to as we receive, right? Because all things come from God. You know, it would be nice to say, oh, well, I earned my paycheck. Yeah, but how did you earn it? Well, you earned it by the talents and abilities that God gave you. Without those, you wouldn't have earned it. So, everything you have really belongs to God. We are but stewards of what we have here. What's a steward do? Well, he manages something for a time, and when the, when the job is done, he turns over what he has, and it's done. So, 
so a tithe, 10% or proportion, one, two, three, four, five percent, right? Not a fixed amount, not not five dollars, two dollars, or ten dollars in the offering plate every Sunday. Because there's a danger in that. Think about it for a minute. And I know I'm getting a little stewardship preachy here, but think about this for a minute. If if you're the kind of person who has over put twenty dollars in the offering plate, well that is good. I mean there's nothing wrong with putting twenty dollars in the offering plate every Sunday. But the twenty dollars that you put in the offering plate today versus the twenty dollars you put in the offering plate ten years ago, you have continued to receive from God greater and greater amounts. Simply inflation does that. And what you place in the plate has become lower and lower in its value. And so you're not putting the same thing in now as you did then. But if it's in proportion, if it's a percentage, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or more, then it is always growing as God blesses you. And if, if your times become tight, it also shrinks, right? If you're, if you're making $20,000 a year, 1% of $20,000 is 1% of $20,000. If you're making $50,000 a year, 1% of $50,000 is 1% of $50,000. It goes up and down. And so your offering is in proportion to how God has blessed you. But this widow goes beyond that, doesn't she? She takes everything that she has, and two copper coins, which wasn't much to begin with, and she gives it all to God. The gift that she places into the offering box when she gives everything is more more than what all the rich who are putting 10% in. God isn't telling us to give everything, but he's reminding us that everything belongs to him and, and that we can trust him at his word. And if we give him everything that we can, everything we have, he will still take care of us. How? I don't know. That's not for me to determine. That's what he does. Paul tells us to live as, to be as living sacrifices to our Heavenly Father, to sacrifice even our life to him. So, as he says this, some of the disciples are looking up at the temple, which is being rebuilt by the Herodians. It had fallen into disrepair. And the Herodians are like the scribes. They like to have big things and be recognized for it. So they are rebuilding the temple. And it, it is a beautiful structure. It is larger than what King Solomon, Solomon had built. Um, they're seeking to make it more beautiful, but they'll never get there. Look at this, Jesus. Look at this marvelous temple, this house of God that man is building here. It's adorned with... Noble stones, right? Gems. And, and the offerings of the people, right? The hammered gold and things like that. And Jesus says, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Of course, Jesus already knows because he knows all things that in 70 AD, the Romans are going to come and destroy the temple and the Jerusalem in general uh, because of because of rebellious behavior but also the things that we build in this world are passing they're temporary nothing in this world is permanent God is the only thing that is permanent his word endures forever and the disciples see this as a teaching of the end times. Teacher, when will these things be and what will be the signs that are about to take place? And Jesus, as, he, as he's done a few times here in this section of the text, he doesn't answer the question that's asked. He gives the answer that's needed. Right? When is this going to happen? 
see that you're not led astray. Don't be concerned with when it's going to happen. You can't control the days or the hours of the week, right? The, the, the sun turns when it will, the planet orbits as it will. You can't change the day. When it comes, it comes. So see that you're not led astray so that when the day comes, you are ready, awake. Many will come in my name, in Christ's name, saying, I am he. And the time is at hand. Don't go after them. <laughs> the number of predictions that man has made about when the end times are coming, when, when the world will end, is, well, ridiculous, first of all, but uh, astronomical? People sit down with the scriptures and they try to do the numerology of the scriptures. Oh, we have the date. And then the date comes and goes. Even the Mayan calendar, right? The Mayan, was it 2012? The Mayan calendar ran out of days. Well, what happened? Well, the Mayan calendar starts over again. Everything is a cycle. I was thinking about that yesterday as I wrote a letter for our article for our news, newsletter. But everything is in cycles, right? I mean, what happens when 2023 runs out. We get to December 31st, 2023 at, at 11.59, and then it's midnight and it's 2024. Right? The time will come. The time is coming. And it's closer today than when we first believed. But don't be worried about that. See that you're not led astray. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. The suffering in this world will continue for a time, and it will grow. It continues to increase. Sin is growing, not shrinking. And every generation thinks that theirs is living in the end times, by the way. If you go read the literature of every age, you will find that in every age, writers have written that the end times are near. And they are. Closer every day. But don't worry about that. See that you're not led astray. That you remain in Christ Jesus. In his word. In his promise. In faithfulness to him. Don't be afraid of the last day. If you're in Christ, you've got nothing to be afraid of. In fact, be more concerned with your last day because it is more likely that your days will come to an end and you will face judgment as you pass out of this world in the next, as you die, then the final day will come. So he says to them, and here it is, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences. There will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. And this is what happens to the disciples in, in the first 200 years of the church. They are persecuted first by the Jews, who, who obviously hate Jesus and his teachings. And then by Rome, they're persecuted by Rome until the day that that uh, that uh, that uh, Constantine makes um, makes Christianity the religion of the nation. So we'll have this is this is a now and not yet thing because it's happening. It's going to happen to the disciples when Christ is raised and ascended. Every one of the every one of the apostles, uh, with the exception of John, is martyred in some way. Uh, Peter hung upside down on a cross. There's beheadings. Um, Christians being thrown into the into the arena for the amusement of the Romans and Caesar. Um, John <laughs> John suffers in his own way. He's not killed for the faith. He lives out his life into old age, but he's boiled in oil at one point and doesn't die. 
and 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 then he uh, then he is exiled to the Isle of Patmos for a time, and then comes back to Antioch. But even in his in his as the narrative goes, as the story is told, even as he reached his elderly years, as he was no longer able to walk into the into the sanctuary of the church or up into the chancel, they would bring him in on a litter, on a on a on a bed. They would carry him in, and John would preach. And his preaching was simple. He would look at the disciples gathered and and I say disciples because you and I today are disciples, students of Christ, followers of Christ. He would say to the disciples gathered there, for the apostles were all dead at this point except for him. He was the, the last of the apostles. He would look at the disciples gathered there in the, in the sanctuary and he would point and he would say, love one another. Love one another. Love one another. And when queried why he would say this, when they asked him, John, why do you keep saying this? He said, that's what Jesus said. Love one another. So all of this stuff, the end times doesn't matter. Love one another. And when they bring you before the kings and the governors for my name's sake, remember, you're not engaged in a battle against the flesh, but against the spirits and the power of the air, the evil forces of the world, the devil and his. So this will be your opportunity to bear witness. Let's give testimony to show forth the love of Christ in your actions and in your words. And don't meditate, don't consider, don't contemplate what it is that you might say when you come before them. Don't worry beforehand about what you're to say, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You know, that's what he said to Moses, too. When, when he sent Moses back into Egypt to speak to Israel, to tell, to tell the Hebrews that the Father had not forgotten them and that he was coming for them, that he was sending Moses to them. And Moses said, yeah, but I'm, I'm not good at speaking, and I, I, don't, I don't know if I can actually do this thing. And God said, who gave you a mouth? Again, everything is from God. The mouth in your face and the words in your mind and the guidance of the Holy Spirit from your baptism are all yours. So he will give you a mouth and words and wisdom to speak when the time is necessary. You will be delivered. You will be. This isn't an alternative thing for the disciples who are hearing this and it's eventually not an alternative thing for us. Look at the world around us today. You will be delivered up by, even by parents, and brothers, and relatives, and friends. And some they will put to death. You will, you will, it's a definite thing, you will be hated by all for my name's sake. That's scary. That's scary to know that the world hates you. As a human being, you want to be loved by all. You, 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 want to, you, you desire to be agreeable to everybody and to be able to, to talk to people and, and not be uh, put out. Or The world hates you. But the Greek Kai a division in thought, a change in statement. You will be hated for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. By faithfulness in Christ Jesus, you will live. John 14. He who believes in me already has eternal life. Even though he die, yet shall he live. That's our hope. In the midst of 
earthquakes and famines and pestilences and persecution and of wars and tumults and all of these things. We stand with the disciples. We stand with the apostles. We stand with the faithful in Christ Jesus, knowing that not a hair on our head will perish by our endurance, by faith in Christ Jesus alone, we will gain our lives. He who loves his life will lose it. He who hates his life will gain eternal life. In Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's go to the prayer of the day. Got a little bit long there, guys. Sorry. Almighty and ever-living God, you fulfilled your promise by sending the gift of the Holy Spirit to unite disciples of all nations in the cross and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. By the preaching of the gospel, spread this gift to the ends of the earth. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we move on then to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And I was headed into prayers for ourselves and others on this, uh, on this day, um, but I, um, I am... Uh, looking for something. Um, I wanted... Uh, I'm, I'm looking in my little prayer book here and I wanted a couple of different prayers specifically for this day. Uh, not prayers in the hour of death. I think we're okay there. Um, hmm. Well, I may have to do this as they say, ex cardia, we're out of the heart. So let us pray for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning. Dear Heavenly Father, you have so ordered this world that I do not spend my days in lonely solitude, but rather you have surrounded me with family, friends, neighbors, acquaintances, and fellow workers. Look with favor on all those whose lives touch mine in the course of my daily activities. Grant them a deep and lasting sense of their sinfulness and for Jesus' sake, lead them to genuine repentance. Give them the grace always to seek forgiveness of their sins and to know the blessedness of those to whom the Lord does not charge their sin. Shield them from temptation by the evil one. Fill their hearts with the faith that works by love, the hope that does not bring shame, the charity that never fails, the trust in you that will not be shaken, the patience that endures and the courage that will always confess Christ. Help them give themselves to your service, that walking before you in righteousness and holiness all the days of their lives, they may live in your favor and finally die in your peace. For Jesus' sake, amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, on this Memorial Day weekend, many are are uprooting themselves from their homes and traveling, whether it be to cottages or vacation spots or family gatherings. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would guard them in their travels, keeping them safe, giving them answers to any issues that come, and allowing them to, 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 to be a witness to you as they travel, sharing the faith that is in them, 
uh, by living out in the, living in the love and the grace that you've given them. We ask, Lord, that you not only would guide them and guard them as they travel to their destination, but also that you would bring them home again safe. We give thanks on this Memorial Day weekend for those who gave their lives to protect our lives and our way of life. Uh, guard the soldiers who are still active in duty and give comfort to those who have returned home bearing the guilt of, of those who they lost in battle. Be also with those who have asked for our prayers, those who are in need of your comfort and your assurance each day, especially Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Holden, Cheryl, and all who call upon your most holy name. Hear their prayers and ours for the sake of your Son, who died and rose again, ascended, and is now with you until the day of judgment, when he returns to claim us as his own. This we ask in that same name, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, God's blessings on your Memorial Day weekend. Um, enjoy it. The weather's going to be beautiful. That's what I'm hearing. Um, travel safe if you're traveling. Return home safe if you're coming back. Um, the Lord be with you. And uh, go to church on Sunday. I don't care if it is Memorial Day. If you got to find a church that's not near your home, go. Uh, hear the Lord's word. Live in his grace and his comfort. Receive his gifts the body and blood and the forgiveness of sins that you too may endure until the end. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here on Monday. I don't know what we're doing yet. To be honest, I, I was thinking about going away from the treasury of prayer for uh, a few months now and, and um, reading through a book, um, perhaps reading through a, a single book of the Bible, uh, chapter by chapter or, or verse by verse. Uh, and, and perhaps pairing that with a commentary or some other kind of thing. If you have ideas, comment. Whether it's here on Facebook or over on YouTube, comment. Let me know what you think uh, you would like to hear. What can I do to serve you? Um, and uh, maybe I'll put up a, a poll of some kind here later today uh, that you can respond to. God's peace be with you. Go to church on Sunday. We'll see you back here one way or the other on Monday. Where's the button? I lost the button. You guys know where the button is? Can't see. Uh, where's the button? Um, it's supposed to say, here it is. God's peace. <laughs>